Yes, sir. Well, you definitely look the part, player. Uh, welcome, everybody, to another show, uh, Market Watch, where uh, me, Eric T. Jackson, and uh, Eddie Chanel get together and we discuss uh, all things finance. We discuss uh, uh, what's going on in the news that affects the market, uh, the stock market, uh, the economy. You know the job market. You know we 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 uh we talk about a lot of things that affect a lot of things. Uh, Eddie, what's going on, baby? Hey man, I'm glad to be back, man. Yeah, you know it's crazy because man, with all the news in the markets, man, between elections and layoffs and recessions, and I mean it's it, it just man, it's so many things that we can't control. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> focus on some of the things that we can control, man, and and uh, absolutely and take it from there, boy. Take it from there, absolutely. So let's uh, let's start there. Uh, the elections. I know the elections were going on uh, for a long time. Early elections, uh, early voting, but uh, the actual uh, first day of voting was uh, yesterday. And uh, uh, so let let me ask you this: like, so I've I've been investing a few years, but you know, it seems to me like every time there's an election year uh the market spikes you know i've been part of it spiking up and yesterday it sort of spiked down so so what generally in your opinion has been the, the effect on the market during like election time i mean i tell you what i what i truly think a lot of it is man is the uncertainty you mm-hmm. know what i mean so you got people that you know when when there's uncertainty the unknown people fear that stuff man they don't know how things are going to turn out so you know, you get these wild shakes up and you know shakeups shakeups in the market. Mm. Like uh, you know, yesterday day, I mean, I mean, looking at the Dow Jones and stuff, man, was you know, it was up and started to retrace a little bit, you know, because getting closer and closer to you know to election time and yeah, uh, you know, all the votes being cast, man. And, you know, it's crazy because the the market don't know what to do. So you have, you know, <laughs> just, I mean, just like naturally in politics, you have people that are pulling for one side, people pulling for the other side, you know what I mean? And yeah, and, and the market kind of hangs in the balance, waiting to see. And, uh, you know, if, if I didn't know any better, you would think that, you know, d- depending on who's winning certain elections, man, that's, you know, where the market goes up, market goes down. You know, I think a lot of it's all opinion based, though, you know. Yeah. So that's my that's my uh, my next thing uh, is. Certain people say that, you know, if a certain side is in office, then, you know, the the market is up. Another side is in office. It's down. I've sort of seen it both ways, but I'd like to to look at the history of, first of all, the the presidential elections and see like with Republicans in office versus Democrats in office, how has the market responded? I mean, ha- have you ever looked at that or, or done that research? You know, man, and and there, I'm sure there's some form of correlation there. I mean, mm-hmm. we'd have to go searching for it. You know, mm-hmm. one of the biggest things I'll say is. You know, it seems as though, you know, when, when people are starting to leave office and new ones coming in that, you know, usually people are either trying to go out on a, you know, on a high note. And then, you know, it just the last we to point the finger when, you know, when things aren't, you know, the same way because, you know, factors happen in the market and happen, you know, happen, you know, globally within our own country. Yeah. And there's also times where, you know, you look at it, the president's leaving office, man, and it's been, you know, on shaky ground in the markets. And, and yeah. you know, the next time, I mean, case in point. George Bush was Bush was leaving office, man, and, and gas prices, I remember, were skyrocketing. I was at uh, Morton Ranch, man. It cost me 80, 90 bucks, and I'm having to fill up every three days. You know what I mean? Gas is four fifty five, and that's here in Texas, where it's, you know, normally a lot cheaper. Right. Uh, and then, you know, uh, enter Barack Obama, and markets start to recover, and blah, blah, blah. And then, you know, here comes Donald Trump, and then the markets start to, you know, soar. You know what I mean? He yeah. gets handed over, you know, uh, a pretty good deal, and markets start to soar. Yeah. Keeps them out of office. And then, you know, again, there's so many other things that go into it, man. Like I said, nobody would anticipate that we're going to have this COVID outbreak and, you know, the world yeah. be on lockdown. And, and I mean, but yeah. I, I think we were due, regardless of who's in office, I think, you know, the markets were due for some form of correction, man. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I, I don't know that we're done anytime soon. You know what I mean? While there have been, you know, some nice rebounds, I put it on my newsletter today. Okay. Some nice rebounds and everything, man. But like we talked about last week, earnings season was, you know, I mean, has been good. And, you know, you talk about the layoffs, which I know we'll get to. You know, while, while it seems bad for the economy, like, oh, man, you know, these big companies are laying people off. That's what the Fed's looking at. You know what I mean? Because it's going to mm-hmm. cool down the labor market a little bit, you know, as, as uh-huh. labor market is running hot. 
it's you know what I mean that it's tough to to combat inflation because you know everybody it looks as though everybody's got money everybody's got jobs everybody's got money you know what I mean <laughs> it's always the case you know I both know that yeah it's not always the case yeah but you know when you see that stuff you know and like Facebook Facebook talking about laying off you know I don't know how many people and uh, yeah I stock saw was it. up five dollars a share today <laughs> people yeah, were happy that they were losing their jobs <laughs> and that's the crazy thing man why because the, you know that's what wall street you know is, is expecting you know the the fed to look at and be like oh okay well yeah. these guys are laying people off and, you know that's what they want to combat inflation man they need you know unemployment yeah. rates to go up because you know then there's not as much money you know they're tightening the money supply yeah so so uh looking at the uh so right now is uh the midterm election is that what they they term it? Is it midterm elections? I think that's what yeah, the midterm election is where you midterm, know yeah. all the governors are running and it's, you know and local politics. Point. Yeah, correct. Yeah, you know the the uh, the so, uh, midway through the presidential election. Right, right. So, uh, so with with this, I really hadn't had much experience with the midterm elections and how it it impacts the stock market. You know, so uh, what do you, what do you say about this compared to the presidential elections? I mean, do you, do you think that it has a minimal effect, or do you think the effect might be even greater because it's so many more people you're voting for? Uh, I, I mean, I think a lot of it has to do with you know, are the you know, are are seats being changed? Right, it was one yeah. party becoming the more dominant in Congress as opposed to you know the other party and. And how people feel about, you know, how that is going to affect the economy as a whole, right? Are, you know, yeah. is one, you know, side of it going to do a better job than the other side of, mm-hmm. of getting us back on track and everything like that? Uh, I think that, you know, presidential elections, I would I would think, all right, and this is a blind just assumption, uh, that presidential elections probably have more of an effect. Mm-hmm. But again, I mean, we can look at it now, uh, the way things are going, it seems like everything has an effect. Any bit of news that drops, man, there's some form of effect, you know what I mean, on the markets and yeah. You know, the fact that now we're, you know, midterm elections, I don't think that that is, I mean, I mean maybe it's helping, maybe it's not, you know, it's, I don't think it's helping or hurting, uh, again, because I think it leads to a lot of the uncertainty. People don't know. Right, right, right. Uh, it feels like uh, a lot more people vote during the presidential elections and, and uh, you know, and so, uh, I don't know, it, it feels like that affects more, people feel like the presidential elections affect them more than the midterm elections. And so with, with that, a bit, with that feeling <clears throat> out there like that, then maybe uh, that would sway the market more as well. You know? Yeah. I mean, you, you feel, you know, I mean, economy's a scale, right? You know what I mean? Yeah. If, if, if the person that's running for, you know, the, the governor of Pear, mayor of Pearland is not going to have nearly the effect as, you know, governor Abbott or, you know, or yeah. Beto O'Rourke, you know, coming <laughs> in office. So, you know what I mean? The Congress guy would think that, you know, with the president and presidential election as a person that's supposed to be leading our country, trying to, you know, set his, uh, what do you call it? I don't say, uh, not his party. I guess, yeah, set his, you know, his political party up, you know what I mean? To get the people that they want in there, the yeah. more chairs and the more seats that they have on one side or the other, you know, whichever, you know, uh, political party is, you know, is in charge is right. you know, the ones that get to make decisions. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. I was reading the Wall Street Journal today, man, and it, it it's crazy to think that, like, here it is here. Says uh, stocks got a red wave, right? So the lack of a red wave in Congress might have helped push the stock market deep into the red instead. So you know, people saying that because GOP, you know, their their gains were a lot more narrow than people anticipated, yeah. and you know that caused the market to sink a little bit. You know what I mean? So really? again, it shows you that you know it's all on who who are the people in power, who they you know I mean associated with, and you yeah, know, you know we got to just make the best decisions we can as investors to go through and and you know due diligence, man, do our yeah. research. You know what I mean? So. <laughs> So, so what would you tell somebody uh, that wanted you to invest their money for them uh, if they if they uh, if they had a, a philosophy or maybe a strategy that uh, you know uh, if the Republicans are in office, uh, I want to invest uh, heavy, you know, uh, heavy or uh, you know, be, be uh, oh. Uh, or more invested in less than cash, right? Yeah, uh, yes. More in cash, yeah. So, you know, being a uh, an investment advisor, man, we have that fiduciary duty where we have to, you know, make sure we're we're doing what's in the best interest of our of our clients. Okay. Uh, a lot of times we have to make sure that, well, I say a lot of times, all the time, 
making sure that, you know, we're, we're complying with what they want. So I can't just go off on my own objective and say, you know what, man, I, I don't care about anything political party. I'm going to invest in your money in this mm-hmm. because they may not want to be invested in that stuff. You know, there's mm-hmm. people out there that, that don't want, you know, they want to be invested in socially responsible companies. There's people mm-hmm. out there like, Hey, I don't want to invest in alcohol or tobacco. You know what I mean? Right? My, my mom was a, you know, a smoker and, you know, died of lung yeah. cancer, whatever. And yeah. I just don't want to invest in anything that has to do with, you know, with liquor, tobacco. Yeah. So, you know, we have to follow those, you know, uh, guidelines as far as, you know, what's best for our clients, you know, yeah. obviously give them some form of advice. Like, you know, if we don't think that it's a great idea, but again, it is their money, which right. is there to help them, you know what I mean? To, to, to execute their goals. Yeah. So, so, so since it's their money, uh, do you have, do you just let them do whatever they want to do, even to their detriment? So that's, I mean, where I guess the pickle, man. And again, it, none of this stuff is, I mean, financial advice by any means, but <laughs> my deal is right. if I'm going to, if, if somebody's going to entrust me to do that, I would hope that they would at least respect my opinion. If I'm telling them like, yo, this is what I think, you know, you should do. But again, it is their money because if they don't like what I'm saying, they can pull it from me and they can go to somebody else. You know what I mean? So doing what they would like. But I guess if it comes down to the detriment of a man to really like, hey, listen, I really think it's a bad idea. And if it's something that, you know, morally or ethically that I don't agree with, and I, I mean, you know, maybe I'm not the person to be managing your money, man. You might want to find somebody else just because I don't want that. I don't need that sitting on my conscience. You know what I mean? Knowing that mm-hmm. somebody else want to do something. Now, you know, I knew it was a bad idea and I, you know, kind of just went along for the ride with them. Yep. And now, I mean, it looks bad on me. You know, now they go back and, you know, people are always two sides of the story, right? Or three sides of the story. Mm-hmm. I would tell people like, oh, this guy, you know, did me wrong or, you know, he put me into, you know, some bad investments. Sure. So, you know, it's one of those, you know, it's the give and take. But, you know, again, we do things, try to make sure that, you know, we're doing things in people's best interest and, uh, you know, according to their objectives, financial objectives. Absolutely. Absolutely. So uh, let me ask you this. I know it's not on our uh, agenda, but. So the so the Astros just won the World Series. Yes, sir. Go, Ast- go Astros. Astros, yep. So how does that or does does that move uh the market or am I thinking wrong? Is that does, it, does that more move uh a, a place's economy? But moving that economy, is so does that move the market at all? You know, winning when a city for that city, I mean, if it wins like the Super Bowl, the World Series, the NBA championship. I think if it's if it's at a neutral site, you know, it's going to boost the economy of that city. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. When when you know, when Houston, you know, hosts the Super Bowl, man, just think the sheer number of people that come down here. So naturally, small businesses are you know what I mean are are seeing a lot more foot traffic. Mm-hmm. So I think it helps on, on in that regard. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe if you know somebody who's part owner in some kind of fund or something like that, you know what I mean? They had a SPAC that they started up and and they yeah. win. You know, people might want to jump on board like hey. We're going to celebrate with this person, you know. Uh, I don't think overall it does. Man, I was reading something the other day, man, and and looking at, you know, what really controls the markets. Yeah. I started looking up companies like Vanguard and, and BlackRock, man, and looking at what percentage of assets that they own and, you know, uh, of, uh, of publicly traded companies and just yeah. the sheer volume of assets <laughs> that manager these guys have, man. You're talking in the trillions. Wow. So, you know, somebody like BlackRock who, you know, we'll just say is, you know, 16%, you know, owner of Facebook. Yeah. And them jokers are buying, you know, two, three, four million shares at a time. At a time. That's what's, you know, mean control. Those are the guys are setting price. Okay. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. They're being in control of that much money. Yeah. It's like Oprah. If Oprah decides that she wants to pull all of her money, she's a heavy investor and 50% of her portfolio is in, you know, the technology sector. And she decides that she wants to rotate out of that sector and go to another sector. Yeah. You're going to see a. A movement, you know, what I mean, you're going to see, yeah. you know, a change yeah. in those prices, those companies she's invested in because a shift, yeah, yeah. I mean, it is what it is. But yeah. when companies like you know Vanguard, BlackRock, man, those guys have trillions of dollars in their assets. Those are the ones that are running things. Right, right. So, hey, what BlackRock does, I might do. <laughs> Let me tell you this, man. And, 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 I mean, I, I look forward to opening up my hedge fund here in the in, in the near future, man. And, yes, sir but I want to do it right. You know what I mean? I want Absolutely. to do it the right way. Absolutely. Some of these guys are, you know, they, they are, I say some of these guys, I don't know anybody personally, but you know, there are companies out there that seem like they're all, the only thing they're worried about is the almighty dollar. Yep. You know what I mean? And not yep. doing right by people, you know, cause there's a lot of hedge funds out there that are not profitable. And guess what? They're still going to collect that two and 20. 
no matter what. And they keep getting investors <laughs> in there, and that two and twenty that they're collecting is you know just continues to go up. And they could have eaten. I mean, a, a, a so what? Do, what do you mean you know, by they're not profitable? So, I mean, ideally, what you're looking for in a hedge fund is, you know, it's considered kind of an, an alternative investment. So it's not necessarily you're not investing in, you know, in a mutual fund or an ETF or any publicly traded company. Mm-hmm. It, uh, it, it's you're investing in a fund. So it becomes kind of a limited partnership agreement. Mm-hmm. And basically, you know, with my hedge fund, I, you know, I'll go out and we'll just say it's, you know, ten thousand dollar buy in. And, uh, you know, I'm only taking, you know, 100 clients. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, there's certain rules of people who can become a client, you know, I mean, who can invest in hedge funds. But. With that ten thousand per, you know, and you got a hundred clients. All right, so we're, what are we dealing with now? Yeah. You know, a million dollars. Well, because it's my hedge fund, you, you know, after the paperwork is signed, it is I'm going to invest that money. I don't have to consult anybody. I don't have to ask anybody what I want to do. What you're investing in is my fund, so I get to take that money and I go and invest. Obviously, within the confines of the law, mm-hmm. but then I get to go and I get to go invest. All right, so if we start off with a million dollars, we we'll say it's January one million dollars at the end of the year. You know our balance is down to eight hundred fifty thousand. No, okay. I, don't, I mean we, we took a loss. Yep. You know what I mean? But there's still going to be a management fee that's collected there. There's still going to be you know any percentage of profits or the, you know whatever profits there were, if any. Mm-hmm. So there's going to be you know what I mean they're still going to get paid even if they didn't get paid anything else. If they just got the two percent, well two percent on a million dollars, you know that's twenty grand. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? I mean that's a twenty thousand yeah. dollar payday, and you know and and they lost money. Okay, yeah. I guess so, I got you. Let alone those ones that are very profitable. You know what I mean? Then you're talking getting that two and twenty, and now you're, you know twenty percent of you know you took that million, you made another five hundred thousand. Yeah, twenty percent of that, you take. You know what I mean? Yeah, hundred yeah. grand on top of the two percent you're going to get. I mean, it's so there's you know there's a lot of money. Yes, it could be profitable, but again, some of those guys you know are very very high risk takers. Right. You know I and mean? so they're they're operating on you know trading on a lot of margin. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that, you know, a lot of times highly leveraged and, you know, all it takes is, you know, a couple of bad trades, man, you find yourself mm-hmm. in a hole. And, you know I mean? and, and my deal is I'm doing this. Yeah. If, I, if I'm in this business because I want to help people, my, my number one beat is not because I'm trying to make a dollar, mm-hmm. which yes, it's a, it's a business and, you know, to stay in business, you got to bring in money, but try to do it the right way. Like my Absolutely. deal is if I'm going to eat, why don't everybody eat? Already, I want Eric Jackson to eat. You know what I mean? Yes, sir. I want, you know what I mean? I want my brothers to eat. I want my friends to eat. Like, yo, this is the way to do it, guys. Look, I figured it out. Hey, look, here it is. I figured it out. Now, everybody, come on, let's go. You know what I mean? As opposed to those guys that hold on to it, like, oh, you know, I don't want to bring anybody with me. Yeah. You know, like, like you're talking about, you know, somebody was hitting that, that jackpot, man. You know, <laughs> somebody helped you along the way somewhere in life. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. You, you Absolutely. Trying to give back and help people, man. And that's what we're trying to do with our hedge fund. But Again, it's about being profitable, man. It's it's um, not as easy as people think. Uh, but again, it's you know, you do it for the right reasons and, yeah. and do it, you know, the right way. You know, okay. find yourself being pretty profitable. So let me let me ask you this before we move on. Uh mm-hmm. uh along the sports uh, realm, you you know uh Mattress Mac uh made a bet that the Astros <laughs> would win the World Series, right? Oh yeah. And, and I wanna say that the number they say he bet was 10 million and he ended up winning like 75 million. Yeah. I think it was so, the largest payday. Yeah. I heard largest payday, I guess from that casino or ever. I don't know. But so what is your, what are your thoughts on sports betting and, 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 and you know, with, with regards to the market, is there a correlation or what, Man, do you, what do you think? brother, let me tell you this, and I've got an idea that I've, I've been stewing on and figuring out how you know when I open my hedge fund. But, dude, I I love, I love. I mean, you and I, we know we're coaches. We love mm-hmm. sports. Yep. And I love the NBA, man. I've coached football, you know, sixteen years, and I'm a, I'm a bigger basketball fan you could ever imagine, right? I I am too. So uh, I'm, I I love prize picks. I love FanDuel. I love DraftKings. Yeah, you know I mean, I, I I enjoy daily fantasy sports. Man, matter of fact, I, like, while we're on here now, I've got my prize pick pulled up on my phone. Man, I got this screen <laughs> pulled up. Check, yeah, man. And so, you know, talking about you know doing that stuff, I I enjoy that. And wondering, you know, if it's possible. And let me go ahead and just put out the right. I'm saying this first. I want anybody to think like, oh, you know, steal my idea, but <laughs> open up a fund where that's part of the investment strategy, man. Because again, you know, I've got a pretty decent model right now that goes along bright with uh, prize picks for the. For the NBA, man, it's it's turned a profit, which has been nice. Really? So seeing you find a way, yeah, to incorporate in some way, shape, or form. I mean, think about it like this. You talk about, you know, sports betting, right? Daily fantasy sports, talking about investing in the market. Yeah. Either way, you're gambling your money. Yep. Absolutely. 
So taking a calculated risk with a sports bet because you know sports mm-hmm. and because you know, you know, you have that edge. Yeah. Or whether you got inside information or you know, whatever it is on, on the other side doing it, you mm-hmm. know, through the stock market. So either way, there's some form of risk. I won't say gambling, but there's always there's a sense of risk. Mm-hmm. So I, I love it, man. I'm, I'm, yeah. yeah. So yeah, when I'm I jump when I jumped in, when me and my 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 boy, we sort of got in at the same time. When we got into uh stocks and the stock market, investing, uh trading it gave us that rush that gambling gives you right yep. it was like wow bro this sort of feels like gambling man <laughs> it's like it sort of is you know it's exactly what it is man when you, when you think about you know again it's all i, I, I don't like calling it gambling just because people are like oh my god you're gambling my money right Honestly, it's all about you know calculated risk right there's a risk that is involved there's mm-hmm. a risk if, if i go and i put you know a hundred dollars down would you say that damian Lillard is going to score more than, you know, 23 and a half points a night. Yeah. Or I take that same hundred dollars and I say, I'm betting that, you know, I'm, I'm going to think that Walmart's going to, you know, go up in value over the next three months. Mm-hmm. Either way, I am putting up money. Absolutely. There's some form of risk there, right? Calculated risk. Yep. You know I mean, you take all the things you control, your controllable factors and yep. you take all your, you know, uncontrollable factors and you weigh your pros and cons and see, man, is there any kind of expected value with this or am I spinning my wheels? Absolutely. So, so uh, as of right now, you're saying that that's that's going to be a part of your uh, hedge fund strategy. I don't know that it will be a part. I mean, I don't even know if that's uh, if it's even it's allowed. possible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? I, I mean, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I, I don't yeah. know, but I okay. mean to to find out. And again, they, I mean, I do it for. I mean, I got myself and you know a couple of friends that do it, man. When you know, mm-hmm. share picks back and forth, like, hey, who do you like today? Who would I like? And you know, kind of match up and yep. mix and match players, and you yep. know, and, and go out there and, and try to win a couple of bucks. Absolutely. It's good for the sweat, man, right? You're sitting there and you watch yeah, them. You're a fan of things you would never be a fan of. Right. I don't watch the NHL, but I promise At you, all. I a four-player pick put in tonight on the NHL, and I'm watching the <laughs> NHL game trying to figure out, is this joker going to get them shots on goal, or is <laughs> you know, I just dumping my money in the prize picks and making them boys richer? So, Bro, ho- hockey. Hockey is the only – how many sports are out there? Like 20, 30, I don't know. Hockey is the only sport – that I really don't know the rules. I I know the rules in every other sport. You know, I could coach any other sport, but hockey, I do not know the rules. I know icing if the puck is hit and it crosses two blue lines. That's you know considered uh-huh. a, maybe icing or offside. I don't know what the hell it's called. Yeah. All I know is they need to put that puck in the back of the net. <laughs> You know what I mean, and and be physical when you're doing it and speed. And I mean, there's so much more that goes in hockey. I'm not downplaying hockey as a sport, but. Hey, when I'm I can't on five picks, I need I need I need Sidney Crosby to have more than three and a half shots on goal. I'm joking about to take four shots tonight. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is <laughs> what I'm at. I can't watch something when I don't know the rules, but yeah, I I, I probably could uh uh you know invest a little money if I knew like those things and, and you know what but yeah that that's just that was just something that I, I thought but that's great man. Uh you know I mean absolutely uh, Cheap plug though, we're starting a Discord. Me and you know, a buddy of mine, who, like I said, we've been putting together this model, starting a Discord. Okay, so we get all set up, man. Let everybody know and put out our picks. Look, let me tell you, uh, what was it, Monday? Yeah, Monday, big, huge NBA slate, man. 15 yep. games long. Yep, uh, we put out uh, 11 picks and 10 of them hit. And the one that didn't was Luca. We had him at 50 over 57 and a half fantasy score, and he had 56.2. So, wow, one was perfect on the night. The previous Friday, man, I think we went like eight for 10. So, yeah. And this fun, like I said, it's a sweat, man. You know what I mean? Just sitting here yeah. watching it, man. Lakers, hey, AD, is he going to score more than, you know, 20 and a half points tonight? AD had 91 fantasy points tonight. I had him. I had him. Uh, he, he helped me out big time. But uh, no, 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 not AD. KD, my bad. Oh, KD. KD. Yeah. yeah. KD yeah. would, yeah. AD's off. still playing right now. Yeah. yeah KD he's playing now. Off. KD, yes. KD went off, man. That's yeah. a rivalry game. You know what yeah. I mean? That, that's, that's, I would, I'm not surprised by that. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I also have Jalen Brunson who got – he came on late, but he, he started off slow. So let's move on, my brother. Uh, let's talk about how to invest uh, for generational wealth. You know, this is something that that uh, a lot of uh, guys that like me and you that are trying to help the culture, uh, help generations, help our, our uh, families – uh, sustain wealth and, and and generational wealth is, is what we talk about. So, do you have any ideas on 
uh, I mean, I, I know you do. What is your idea on how to invest for generational wealth? Man, I think a lot of it is uh, people have to make it a point to see the end game. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Look long term and understand mm-hmm. that, you know, if, you may not inherit a, a dime from your parents. My parents inherit anything from anybody. And they just retired, man. They retired with far more money than they could have ever imagined. Hmm. Understanding that, you know, we're, we're looking long-term game here. We're looking at the, you know, end result, right? What is, what is my ideal future state look like? Yep. And it could be whatever you want. You know what I mean? It's just, uh, you know, how this we going to be. So yeah. I think keeping that in mind, making sure to be diligent about putting money away. You know, I'm very big also on pay yourself first, but make sure that, again, make sure you're paying your future self also. Right. Uh, and, you, and you can never go wrong, you know, anytime you have uh, employer matching. As far as any 401ks, retirement plans, any kind of match that they're doing, I mean, that's free money. Exactly. Bro. Yeah, take advantage of that, man. Take advantage of, you know, maxing those things out. If you can afford to do it, max it out. Right. Um, you know, build a dividend portfolio, you know what I mean? So things that, you know, you might say, hey, uh, I read an article not too long ago about uh, people that want to, millennials that are talking about retiring early. Well, if yeah. you start, at, you know, we'll say, it, you know, at, at 22, fresh out of college and you start to load up on, you know, we'll say shares of something like 3M that pays almost $6 a a, a year in, in dividends. Yeah. And you do it over 15, 20 years and you're adamant on, you know, continuing to purchase, you know, shares and shares yep. and shares. Yeah. I mean, at a thousand shares at $6 a year, I mean, that's, that's six grand uh, a year. So you're talking yep. 1500 bucks every three Absolutely. months, man. That, that will cover some bills. It will cover something. You know Absolutely. what I mean? Yep. So that would help with, you know, I mean, towards, you know, again, starting that new venture, man, you know, yeah. taking up a hobby, whatever it is. Yeah. Uh, but as far as generational, man, I, I think a lot of it has to do is like, again, be diligent, you know what I mean? Getting a state plan in place. And as you get older, you know, understand how to preserve capital. Yeah. Uh, and making sure that, you know, you have with that estate plan, man, you know, setting things up in a trust as much as possible. Uh, there are plenty of ways to go about doing it. You can will things over everybody, but, you know, setting up some form of estate plan that allows you to, pass those assets on yeah. and try to minimize the potential tax burden that comes with that stuff. You yeah. Know? And Absolutely. Hope, you know, the way my parents retired there, you know, I mean, they showed me the way and yeah. you know, now, you know, I, I hate even talking about this and I had a hard time doing this when I first got into the industry because again, I had to do my parents stay playing, but you know, my parents passed, my brothers and I, we will have an inheritance. All okay. right. So and my, me and my wife and I, you know, we're building our, you know, you know, our personal wealth, you know what I mean? To, to be able to pass on our kids so you add on the inheritance that we get, and now our kids get, you know, what we inherited plus what we developed. So now they get it. And that's how, you know, I mean, now they continue on and they've got, they will grow up with far more than I had. My grandkids will grow up far more than what my kids had. You know what I mean? And yeah, that's how yeah. generationally you want, you know. And that's how you want it, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I don't want my grand, great, great, I want my great, great grandkids to know that, guess what, your college is paid for. Yeah. Yeah. Not have to worry about taking out student loans and stuff. And yeah. I, I'll add to that, man, that I feel like, uh, and this is nothing specific, but uh, I think that you should uh, start uh, early, right? And be consistent sure. in, in whatever you're trying to do. You know, I think that that'll help to, to uh, build that generational wealth. Uh, you know, the more time you have, the the more you you you'll grow it, uh, and the more consistent you are, the more it will be in there. So, start early, be consistent. You know, and, and whatever it is you're trying to do, if it's putting money away, if it's having a dividend portfolio, start early, be consistent. You know, for sure, and and don't be afraid of you know some of the other things out there, man. You know, like you got people that are like oh, I want no part of bonds. Nice part about bonds, man, is, you know, it's safe. It's, you know, it's a little steady appreciation. You're not going to make, you know, a ton of money. You're just hoping to at least keep up with inflation. But, yeah. you know, as you get further and further into this, into your venture, you know, I mean, of life, you got to realize, like, it comes a certain uh, a point in time where you need to prepare to preserve that capital. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So yeah. Anybody, like I said, if you can take advantage of any retirement account, whether they're matched or not, max that thing out, man, and stay diligent. Even if you decide, like, you know what, I'm still going to contribute because there's plenty of tax advantages that come with that. Yep. I'm going to continue to contribute, even if I sit it in cash flow because I don't like what the market's doing right now. But yeah. you're still taking that pre-tax deduction on any kind of traditional, right, 403B, 457. Uh, uh, and you're being, you know, you're able to take advantage of, you know, those tax savings there. And yeah. again, if they match, if somebody matches me, you know, dollar for dollar for the first, we'll say 6%. Yeah. 
man, if I'm putting up six and you're giving me six, man, that's 12% a year. That's automatic. I'm making 12% a year. That's a, it's a no brainer. It seems like a no brainer, but uh, I've heard of people not doing that. And I, I just can't understand why. Uh, yeah, I mean, and I understand that there, you know, there's this thing called life, right? So people got bills, they got things they got to pay for, man. But, you know, I just, I just did a uh, financial plan not too long ago and, and was working with a client and, and tell her, said, you know, look at some little things, look at some of these subscriptions that you rarely use. If you're really not using it, you're not going to miss it. Save that mm -hmm. 20 bucks. That's 20 mm -hmm. extra dollars that now you have. It doesn't sound like much, but you take that $20 and watch how it grows exponentially with compound yeah. interest. Yeah. And you find little ways to cut expenses. You know what I mean? Hey, you know what? Guess what? You ain't got to spend twenty five dollars a week on, on Starbucks coffee, right? Get your can of Folgers out. You know what I mean? The chock full of nuts from from H E B. Yep. yep. And you get that. You know what I mean? So there's yep. ways to do it, man. But to stay yep. diligent, continue to do it, man, and, and just no matter what. And if you get a raise, again, pay yourself first. But make mm -hmm. sure if you get a raise, you're used to living off X Y Z amount. Well, now you get a little bit of a raise. Well, still live off of X Y Z and take mm -hmm. that extra money, and you know what I mean, and make it work for you because. Absolutely. Again, I look at my wife and my kids now. Hey, look here. Y'all will be gone in eight years. And when you're gone, look, we're here. If you need it, we, we got you. But yeah. time is ready to fly. Me and mom want to travel. There's things that we want to do. Absolutely. Now, you know, you tell your kids no now. They're like, oh, how come I can have it? Well, because <laughs> I, guess what? You're going to have your own future. Yeah. You're going to do what you want. And your mother and I have a future that we're trying to live also when you guys are gone. So Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's what you want to. That's what you want to tell them. You want to tell them I'm teaching you now. So that you won't need what I, you know, what I have for you later. You know, you can, uh, you can have your own. But uh, back to uh, bonds. So bonds, uh, they they might increase a little, but they won't lose money. And and, and I think it, it's something to be said for not losing money. You know, like putting money in, putting money in, putting money in. So if you put money in something consistently for 20 years and you didn't lose money, that's just like making that money. At the end of 20 years, that's what you have. So that's what you made, you know. Yeah, you managed to put that stuff away now. I mean, if yeah. you, I mean, people want to get a technical account for inflation and all that stuff that is not worth the same now as it is going to be, you know, I mean, 20 years from now. That's great. But nonetheless, if nothing else, you have a savings cushion. You've got money put away. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, unexpected, you know, expenses pop up. I mean, you, you've got money put away and it might not be anything you ever have to touch. You right. Know, it might be right. somebody, you know what, I've got, you know, $40,000 that I put away into this, you mm -hmm. know, into this annuity or, into, you know, I've got put away in bonds and I don't even need it right now because guess what? I'm retired as a teacher. TRS right. taking care of me. I've got everything taken care of. So that money could just sit there. Absolutely. Or guess what? Hey, my kids or my grandkids, guess what? You know, 20 grand for you, 20 grand for you. You, you got, you know, some kind of money to start you off with your college fund or yeah, and 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 to be honest, so you know that conversation starts with discipline. You know, it starts with the person on the other end being disciplined enough to to do what we ask them to do, or to do the steps. You know that it takes because uh, you know a, a lack of discipline has bankrupted a lot of people. You know, and For sure. so yeah, you you For really. Sure got to discipline yourself and in and, 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 and your mind to think the right, the right way about that type of thing, you know? Yeah. And you, I mean, it's no different than that person, you know, I mean, that, that person who's diabetic, right? You got to have that discipline, not keep, you know, stay off the sugar. You know what I mean? You know, the person that, you know, anything, right? Trying to lose weight, well, stop eating the junk food. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're, you're, yeah. Whatever it is you're trying to do, there's got to be some form of discipline that goes in. Yeah. And for people that, you know, if you cannot remain disciplined, like it's why, you know, diets, diets to me, I've always never, I've never been a fan of a diet. Because it's a fad. It's either a lifestyle change that you're going to commit to, uh -huh. or as soon as you get off that diet, you get back to doing the things that you were doing before that. You know what I mean? Right, right. So it's a you know it's got to be a lifestyle change. Got to be something again that you commit to, something that you know if, if it means that much to you, you'll do it. Absolutely. Right, like, I ask Absolutely. you all the time, man. The checkbook and the calendar don't lie. So if you go through, you look at your checkbook and you look at your calendar, you see what well, you know what's really important to you. You say this is important to you, but this is where your money's going. Yeah. You know what I mean, so how important is this that much more important than what it is that you're, you know, I mean, you're trying to do ultimately? So, exactly, you sacrifice what you want right now for what you really want down the road. Yeah, yeah, this is important to you, but this is what you spend all your time doing. So, how important is this really if you don't spend the time it takes on it? Absolutely, my brother. That's uh, that's a good thought right there.
Uh, so let's uh, jump into uh, the big tech companies, bro. Uh, they are uh, laying off, hiring, having hiring freezes, uh, all because of what? So uh, I think a lot of it has to do with, you know, uh, you look at earnings and how they're missing. And you know, I mean, it's no different anything else, right? You got to cut expenses. Mm -hmm. right? When you got to cut expenses, sometimes, man, unfortunately, sometimes it's the workforce has got to go. Uh, you know, when you uh, when you've tried everything else, I mean, my last resort, I would think is to try to pull people, you know, out of a job. But, you know, in that same breath, you look at this stuff, you know, going on like, you know, meta. I mean, lays off something like thirteen percent of their workforce, and their stock is Facebook is, people. All right, yeah, yeah, and it was yeah, Facebook, yeah, and the stock is up five dollars a share today. I mean, it's up almost five percent. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah. You end up close today. Now it did gap up and all that, but I mean, which is great, but it's crazy because people are losing jobs, but yet you see the market. You know, I mean, you see certain companies doing better. Well, again, goes back to trying to control that inflation, trying to make sure yeah. that you know the jobs are you know job market starting to cool off. I mean, there's there's a bunch that goes into it, man. And, you know, it's, it sucks to see that people are losing jobs and, uh, you know, on the other side of it, people are, are making money off of that deal. Yeah. Yeah. But again, way of the world, man, somebody's gonna win, somebody's gonna lose. Just like, like we were talking about sports betting. There's gotta be somebody on each side of that bet. <laughs> All right. There's somebody yeah. with the over, there's somebody with the under, somebody just like when you're buying and selling, there's somebody that is buying that stock and the person that's buying is buying for somebody that's looking to sell. So, you know, somebody is it look, I'm, Having ties are like kissing your sister, man, or kissing your cousin, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> Just don't do that, right? There's no ties. Somebody's got to win. Somebody's got to lose, man. So, yeah, like riding a moped, right? It's cool, but you don't want your friends to know that you did it. Exactly. <laughs> we were uh, just talking about the the big tech companies and how uh, they're laying off and 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 everything because of the economy. So what do you think of uh I, I heard that uh Tesla is down like 40% since since uh Musk initially inquired about uh buying Twitter you know and and, and what do you think about that man So I think some of it has to do with yeah you know people are like oh man he's getting you know out of his realm but there's a reason why that man has been successful at all the things he's, you know, he said, I do. I listen to that man's biography, man. And it, it, the dude is, is an amazing human being as far as, you know, how his mind works. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, you know, with, with him buying Twitter and all that stuff, man. I mean, it's, it was no surprise that, you know, he was selling shares of Tesla. So, you know, I mean, to help finance the purchase and everything. So mm -hmm. I'm not surprised that it's down. I tell you, you know, Eric, as it continues to drop, man, I just continue to load up. And, okay. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just, Continue to average down, man. I believe in the company. I think absolutely. That is so 40% 40, 40 down to me uh, is great value, especially in a company that that you believe in and that has a, a CEO that you believe in. So, yeah, I, I, I agree, man. I think that is at great value right now. And I, I would, uh, you know, load up. I think it, it's got you know a little bit more drop in it, but definitely I would try and, you know, add Tesla you know, as I go along. So if you go back almost exactly a year. I mean, I'm talking almost exactly a year to the date almost, man, from the highs of November 4th of 2021, man. I mean, it is down uh, 57%. From wow. That. You know what I mean? That's also, you know, split adjusted and everything for the split that they had, but uh -huh, uh -huh. it's finding support right around where it's at right now, man, about the 175 level. Mm -hmm. um, just bro, just below a little bit, but I mean, I think that, you know, we might have, if, if it can hold up right around this level, it, it I mean, it's going to be bad. I, I have no, I have no fear that, it, it, you know, that, that Tesla's going out of business or that, you know, yeah. the man's going to bankrupt the company. So right. like I, said, I have no problem continuing to buy. Me either, buddy. So uh, the, another thing that uh, we haven't touched on yet, but uh, it's been in the news for about two or three weeks, uh, the Powerball, man. <laughs> so so the powerball i guess it, it got it got up to a little over two billion like two point something billion yeah with a b with yeah a b. with a b and that that was the the largest uh lottery you know the, the largest it had went up ever and uh recently uh some one person won in california and uh 
So my question to you is if that one person came to A1 Capital, said, bro, he said, don't tell nobody, but I got like a billion dollars. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm gonna tell you this, man. When you, when you win money like that, and you look, yeah, I won't tell a soul, but I promise you, public record, they gonna know that they who you know. are, and you will not be anonymous, man. I think USA Today had put out a, a, an article talking about that how the, how the uh, historic Powerball winner uh, can't remain anonymous, right? Because he's in California, yeah, uh, and it says something in there about you know, I guess California being the you know state lottery, yeah, that uh, you know. They're, they're told, hey, don't tell anybody, right? Financial, <laughs> uh, don't tell anybody you've won, right? Only yeah. some states allow winners to remain anonymous. And California is is not, not one of them. <laughs> yeah. But if that dude came to me and told me, hey, you know, what are you going to do? Or what would you do with the money? I mean, the first thing I'm doing, man, is tie to my 10%. You know, some of that mm -hmm. will go to the church, you know, that we attend. Uh, okay. The rest, you know, the, the other, the rest. So, so I'll just say well, it's two billion, man. So, so yeah. that's what you, that's what you're telling him as a human, because, so, because I mean, look at him like, like he had, he's gonna, he's gonna be your first client for your hedge fund, and he believes in you. You did it. You in, he interviewed you and you wowed him. So he has nine hundred million dollars, which is. I think what he's going to clear after taxes and fees, mm. you know what I'm saying? So yeah. he's your, he's your main client. Uh, he wants you uh, to put his money in things that will drive it forward. That will build generational wealth for his family. And, and I don't, I don't think you, you, you're telling, are you telling all your clients to tithe? So talk to no, me. No, no, no. I'm talking major for me that I would. That's what I would do. The first okay. thing I would do is that I would tithe. Okay. You know, I would give, you know, I mean, to give back. And yeah, I'm, I'll tell you this, man. It, my wife tells me all the time. She's like, I don't know how you plan on being, you know, successful as a business owner. Because there are times around, man. <laughs> you give us it away. Well, you know, I mean, it, like, if, you know, you coach like I do, right? Working in the high schools, right? So, you know, there's man. always a problem. Like, football's got a fundraiser. This team's got a fundraiser, right? Yep. You know, and, and it's a way to give back. Why? Because I can Right, you know what I mean? Right, Why do people yeah. buy Lamborghinis? Because they can. Well, if I can afford to give back, I'm going to give back. You know what I mean? Absolutely. I don't I'm have a problem way. with that. I'm now, the anybody same that, that they don't want to, you know what I mean? That's not in their, in the, you know, in their uh, forte to, to tithe or anything like that. You know, mm -hmm. to each his own. It's your money. Do what you will. Mm -hmm. uh, but I, I would tell the first thing you do is, you know, move out of the house. If you own a house, get out of that house. Sell that thing and go find somewhere to stay for a little bit. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So things kind of settle down, right? You get your finances, you know, the check is cut and it's put into your bank account. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, if you're going to purchase another home or build another home, man, try to set up in the form, you know, of a, of a corporation or something like that and put in that name, try to remain, you know, as anonymous as possible. Okay. You know, uh, set up some form of a trust fund, right? Take care of, you know, your your lineage down the line with 900, $900 million that, that that's... That's a significant amount of money where realistically you wouldn't have to do it. I mean, if you took that and you earned, you know, 1% at the bank, you know, I would never tell anybody to put $900 million in one bank. Right? That, that's four and a half million. You know what I mean? A month. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Four and a half million dollars. You know what I mean? In interest, if, if they take that 1% a year, I mean, four and a half million dollars in interest they're making. So even yeah. if we, you know, round it up and it was, you know, $4.8 million a year, mm -hmm. right? what are you looking at? Uh, you know, one point something million dollars, you know what I mean? How, yeah. I mean, how much does that break down to a month? Right by 12? Is that $400,000 a month? Yep. Yep. You know what I mean? So you can live off of the interest alone, but, you know, tell them, that, yes, do that, get some of that money put away, put into a trust fund, and then find some things that, you know, hey, maybe you're into real estate. Again, a lot of that stuff has to do with uh, okay. so, so, and things like that, that, you know. So, so let me, let me, let me prioritize this so, so that our uh, audience can, can get a clear picture because, because uh, this is great stuff. So number one, uh, move out of your home. Like that's serious business. Move out of your home and go somewhere where you can be alone, quiet, anonymous. Is I mean, just to, I mean, again, you know as well as I do, man. Because I, you know, there's one in every family. Boys, boys find out you got a little bit of money, man. They're gonna come out the woodworks looking for I, No, it. absolutely. I, I just want to. I mean? Yeah, so, yeah. So I my it. deal is, is is to get up out of from where you're at. You know, I mean, even if you got to go for a little bit, you know, you put the house yeah. on the market 
or you know what you want to hold on to the house hold on to the house fine but right. get away you know i mean if you can get out of the state once you know until everything is settled down mm-hmm. and then you know start with your plan of attack i think the first thing they need to do they need to get in contact with some you know form of an accountant right cpa mm-hmm. that's going to help them deal with the tax burden you know what i mean that's going to come with having all that money regardless of if you pay taxes now you know earning four and a half million dollars a year in in, in interest you know there, there's going to be a tax burden on that absolutely you know what i mean so to seek that you know and, and now that they've gotten all that information and they've gone on, they've, you know, I found a CPA that I trust and yep. now they're with me. All right, well, let's start looking at setting up a trust. Let's start putting things into, uh, you know, making sure you got your money spread across several different banks, right? So the FDIC is only insured up to something like 250,000. So, and then you can never go wrong setting it into a money market account. It's like, Hey, I don't know what else to do. Well, for one, let's look at what do you owe in debt, right? Pay everything you need to pay off, pay it off. Mm-hmm. Yep. You got parents, you're gonna help and, out, brother, this is family, you're gonna pay help and pay pay out whatever and, and as long as, as long as you're not nine hundred million in debt, you should be all right. <laughs> all your debt should be paid off. <laughs> Look, if that joker watches this podcast for one, go do me a favor and go ahead and bring your money over here to A One Capital and, and we'll do you right. Yes, sir. Do right by you. And the other part of that is, man, just pay off my house. <laughs> <laughs> just pay off my house, man. That's all I ask, man. We always That's have to do it. it. Play it. That's we play it. With the coaches, man. And, you know, everybody's like $20 buy in. And, you know, I think last time we had something like 200 tickets or something like that. And, uh-huh. and uh, you know, we've always said that if, you know, if, if anybody were, any of us were to hit, I got a group of friends. So mm-hmm. If any of us were to hit, man, we'll make it a point to pay off each other's homes. Absolutely. So here you go, man. We'll pay off your home. And, yeah. You know, I worry about a mortgage anymore. So yeah. yeah, pay off all your debts. You know what I mean? Anything that you owe, uh, you know, and and I don't want to tell you to to sit on it like, you know, like a rat guarding cheese has been hoarding, but you know, <laughs> make sure that, you know, if if you plan on trying to help people out or doing, you know, I mean that you're doing it not just with best intentions, but also, <laughs> you know, you're looking out for, you know, that that is a huge nest egg you sit on. There's gonna be people coming out trying, you know, mm-hmm. trying to get to that nest egg, you know what I mean? Yeah. You know? Yeah. Absolutely. So that, and, and this is something that, you know, like, I don't know if it's a, a thing where, uh, that regular folks talk about winning the lottery all the time. That's how I know I'm a regular person. Cause I talk about hitting the lottery all the time. <laughs> sure, I'm with you. Yeah. I'm a normal person. You know? and it's crazy. Cause I'll be that same person. Like, damn, man, I just need to hit the lotto. And yeah. Looking like, well, hell, in order to hit the lotto, I got to play the damn lotto. And I'm yeah. Like, when it gets up those one point nine, you know, billion dollar jackpot, like, all right, I'll throw twenty bucks and let's go. You yeah, know, it's great. If not, you know, I'll spend that twenty dollars going to, you know, I mean, eat a jack in the box or you know, going to right. water burger or something like that. So right, right. But in, in our uh, discussions about hitting the lottery, you know, you can learn a lot about a person. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and, sure. based on what they would do if they hypothetically hit the lottery. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and and a lot of what I would do is what I, 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 I I've told people in the past <clears throat> is I've always I want to be a giver by by nature so you know I'd find some way to give the to charities to the less fortunate you know to that type of thing and uh, you know what they say man like with all that money it's a curse you know that type of thing the lottery curse and you know uh, money money is the root of all evil. I, I mean, I believe that you can uh, bypass a lot of that by being a giver and, and, and giving money away and, you know, that type of thing. And just not, I think greed is, is a lot of, it plays a part in a lot of that. And as long as you're not greedy with it, you know, I think you can be smart. You can be frugal. You can be uh, judicious. Right, but greed is another it. animal. Yeah, it yeah. is. And, you know, and I, I'm very big, man. I like the, you know the true crime stuff, man. I read a lot of you know between you know the mafia and drug cartels and, yeah. and you know, like a you know the reading the Wolf of Wall Street, man. Listening to that book and you know the one thing that gets all these guys the the underlying fact that gets them all is greed. Yeah, one of yeah. the seven deadly sins. I mean, that what what is all their downfall because they got greedy. Yeah, so I think you know what I mean you come into some money like that that you know. You know, I won't ever push religious beliefs on anybody, but right. whatever it is that, you know what I mean, you believe in, I think that if you do good by people and you yeah. do right with the money, man, there's a lot of good you could do for a yeah. lot of people with that amount of money, man. Absolutely, bro. $100 million. I'd go to every school that I've ever coached at. Yeah. Here it is for the next, you know what I mean, five years. Yeah. It's going to be a $100,000 scholarship for not the top 10, for numbers 11 through 20 yeah. in the school. 
Absolutely. And, you know, got a ten thousand dollars scholarship for those ten kids. You know, what I mean, every year for the next, you know, however many years, and make sure my money is being put to. If I got to write the check myself, because things like that, man. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you give back the kids, man. Tie back mm-hmm. to the church. I mean, you know, the cancer side is things like that. I mean, you, yeah. you know, people become skeptical and become, you know, kind of cynical sometimes. Like, oh, well, you know, how do we know if that money's being put to good use? Well, if you're that worried about it, man, you cut the check for somebody that needs it themselves. Yeah. Somebody needs fifty grand because they need, you know, open heart surgery and they can't afford it. Mm-hmm. Well, rather than donating it to whatever you know heart association you know what go find that person hey it's taken care of don't worry about it yeah and do it anonymously i mean i'm very big on that you know what i mean absolutely uh, yeah the, do it without boasting about it without you know like people you you may your intention may be for it to be anonymous and you may get found out that's fine but you don't need to boast about it brag about it that type of thing yeah you that's do it because right. you're doing it uh, you know, for all the good reasons, you know, Absolutely. for all the right reasons, not so Absolutely. you can have some form of recognition, you know, and I think that a lot of times people, you know, like, oh, look at me, look what I did. Yeah. And then there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, for, you know, to, to listen to people like Buffett and, and, you know, Mark Zuckerberg to say they want to be able to give away, you know, Bill Gates to give away 95% of their, of their, you know, their fortune. Yeah. Quite fast. You know, it's, uh, I think they have good intention with that stuff. Um, if you're, like said, if you're really that skeptical about, you know, oh, this foundation, start your own foundation. That's this something is, that I'm looking forward to doing. Mean, on foundation, man. So, so what am I work? If I'm working this hard to build generational wealth for my kids and their kids, and and Warren Buffett said my kids gonna get what I give them now and nothing else. I mean, what does that say about me? Am I am I doing it right, or is it just one man's philosophy? I think it's one man's philosophy. I think everybody believes in you know in certain things, things that you know that that what may mean. You know, it's weighted scales, right? So, what what something that might be be mean the world to you mm-hmm. might not be, you know, might be at the bottom of somebody else's list. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, you know, so like I got a friend of mine who, you know, talking about giving their kids stuff, man. He made all his kids. He could he could damn sure afford to pay his kids college and never have them have to take out a student loan. And he made all his kids. If you had to go to school, you're going to college. Yeah. You're going to take out student loans. They didn't know at the time that he was going to pay them all for them, but teach them a little bit of responsibility. Like, hey, this is something you want to do. You know what I mean? That it, it, it's going to take work. You know what I mean? It's like you can't just eat off of everybody else. So, you know. That makes all the sense in the world right there, man. You know what I mean? Like they don't need to know that you're going to pay it off. Same thing with my kids. Like guess what? You know what? If if you need to go, guess what? You're going to take out the student loans. Yeah. Yeah. And when it's time to pay them, don't worry about it. You know, they they don't know it now. But guess what? When it's time to start paying them, hey, surprise. Congratulations. Graduate from college. We're going to pay off your student loans. Don't worry about that. Yeah. So let me ask you this. The other side of winning the lottery. Uh the guys who win the lottery and below it are broke in three years. And like, what do you think about that? Like, like what do you have to do to blow? Uh, and not everybody wins 900 million. Right. But, but right. what do you have to do to blow through? Let's say 50 million. Is, is that, would that be easy to blow through? I think if you're stupid with your money. Yeah. I mean, man, there's a, if anybody hadn't watched it, there's an ESPN 30 for 30 called broke. It talks about former athletes Mm -hmm. and how they, you know, some of them have gone on and done well with it and how so many of them have gone on and broke bankrupt. And, uh, you know, there's easy ways again, when everybody's got their hand out, right. You know what I mean? There's I'm by, I'm by my mama house and I'm doing this, I'm doing that and I'm buying this and I'm buying that and not realizing that, Hey, you know, that, that money is not, it ain't infinite. If you're not smart with it, you will find yourself, you know, and, and if you don't find the right people to help you with it, and I think people have a hard time with that because, again, money is personal to them, right? I'm going to spend my money the way I want. I don't need anybody in my personal finances, but and you don't have that, people you trust. It's, yeah, it's, to it's that happening. point, a, a lot of – a lot. I'll just – I'll let you finish, but a lot of uh, people who – who and not, not athletes and speaking, but I'm speaking of lottery winners uh, who actually go broke or, or, or uh, people who didn't grow up with money, who, who yeah. didn't, didn't grow up with wealth, who – don't know how number one they don't know how uh money works and number two they don't trust easily so they don't have anyone that they can go to and tell them and, and that they can believe me and that teaches them the right way you know to to help that money be, sustain them you know uh, all right go ahead brother yeah no i mean i it, you're you're absolutely right man when when you don't know you know, and, and I mean, think about somebody again, $900 million or $50 million. There's people out there, man, I ain't have $50 in my pocket all my life. I got 50 million. I don't know what to do with that. I want to go and buy all the things that I could never afford. And now, you know, I have the money to do it. 
yeah. and not realizing that, hey, you know what? Yes, do all that stuff and enjoy it. But guess what? Make it last. It's not going anywhere. Probably you don't have to spend it all at once. Absolutely. And, you know, again, not knowing, uh, you know, and, and being afraid to go and ask for help. You know, I, I, I equate it to this, you know, not when I meet with, you know, potential new client that if you had a, uh, a toothache, you go see a dentist. If you, you know, you got the flu, you got, you know, Corona, you got COVID, you, you're going to go see a doctor, right? Mm -hmm. Why? I mean, you could go and pull that tooth out yourself. You can go fix that toothache. You just got to learn about it, right? Yeah. Why do you call the dentist? Well, because that person knows. So why not do the same thing when it comes to your money? Right. You go find somebody. If you don't know, don't be afraid to ask. Yeah. You know what I mean? And interview people. Like when I meet people for the first time. I tell them like, you know, after our meeting, like I, I, I want you to go and meet with other financial advisors, man. Yeah. Because I may not be the right fit. And I don't want to be, you know, just, you know, I'm, you're the first person that, you know, I'm the first person you met with. And, you know, yes, I came with a recommendation from somebody else, but please make sure to go meet with other people. Do your due diligence, man. Do your homework and go and find out. Yeah. You know, I think 90% of business has to do with, you know, uh, with trust. And if, you know, you can't trust a person, I mean, that probably needs to just end the conversations there and, you know, I mean, go find somebody else. Yeah. Like, don't be afraid to ask for help, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, 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 some people like, yeah, they, they don't see it through, you know, they'll, they'll uh, go with the first person that they, they interview or, uh, you know, something like that. And, you know, a lot of times that's a recipe for a uh, failure. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it's, it's no different than, you know, again, if your car breaks down and you're not a mechanic, you're going to take your car to a mechanic. You can mm -hmm. YouTube it. You can learn how to do it on your own. Mm -hmm. No, I'm saying you can't do that. But yeah. if it's not something that you're willing to learn or you're willing to teach yourself or willing to go and find out, right? Well, go get the help that you need. You know what I mean? Go yeah. find somebody that knows. Yeah. And, 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 and people, go ahead. Yeah. No, my, people, my, my, well, my plumber doesn't cut my hair. I go to a yeah. barber. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And people, like, people need to be honest with themselves. Are you smart enough to, you know, no, like, are you disciplined enough? No, I'm not. So you need people that can help you in those areas, you know? Uh, so let me ask you this. Uh, I always feel like I've never won the lottery, but you know, at times, like we get big stipends and stuff and you get, you get a lot of money at one time, whatever it is. I feel like I get taxed like twice. You know, they. I feel like they take a, a cut up front, and, and then uh, I end up getting taxed on the back end. Like, like so when when these lottery winners, uh, how many how many times are they getting taxed? Because it, it just feels like if if I get taxed on the money, and then I need to let somebody hold some money, it shouldn't be income to them. That like. I got I, I paid the tax. So why 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 I got they got to pay tax on it? Like what's up? Yeah, I'm with you. Well, you know they have gift uh, deals now where you can gift up this you know a certain amount of money per year. I think they just up it for 2022. But you know where you can gift over some money. But after a while, yeah, it, it's going to be considered income. You know what I mean? That they're going to tax it, man. And the crazy thing is, like you know, with like estate taxes, you, I already paid the tax on that money. Before I died, now that I'm dead, you want to tax it again? <laughs> tax it again. My kids? Yes. You know what I mean? It's like, man, why, why is there that double taxation, man? Yeah, you know, look, I'm isn't no that in the Constitution, man? I don't know. Whatever it is, they need to have it repealed. Look, if I pay tax, I mean, here's the deal: if I if, I, if I'm contributing to a Roth IRA, I've already paid the tax on that money. So what I'm contributing right now, I mean, when I when it's time to take my withdrawals, mm -hmm. I'm not gonna be taxing that money again. Yes. That's but if right. I decide that that money has already been taxed, and I want to give you know a hundred thousand dollars to, you know, each of my brothers. We'll just say. Yep. Now they have to take that gift tax and spread it out over so many years, so they don't have to pay tax on it, or you know, take it all at once, and now you're paying the tax on it. That money's already been taxed. Why are you taxing it again? Yeah, I don't like, know. I, I have no idea, man. Yeah. So I thought I, no, I thought, I thought the way. <laughs> I <don't know. laughs> I thought no double taxation was in the Constitution. I mean, you're better than me. Look, I've taught math and CPE <laughs> the last 16 years, man. Let's see. <laughs> Every coach I see, I assume they taught a little bit of history along the way. Maybe not, I guess. No, nope, no, nope, not here. I see I, something here about a uh, corporation double taxation. 
Okay. Constitutional law, due process, those types of All right, here we go. The federal government may tax merely on the ground of citizenship. I don't know, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all I know yeah. is if you can find a way to minimize your tax burden, yeah. please do so. Yeah. Again, do that within the confines of the law. But if you can find, you know, uh, loopholes or, uh, you know, tax advantage savings that you can take mm -hmm. advantage of, mm -hmm. please do. You work hard for your money. There's yeah. no reason why, you know what I mean, you should have to give any more of it away than than, than you need to, you know what I mean, back to the government. Absolutely, bro. Absolutely, bro. I, I'm with you 100% on that. Shoot, man, this has been great, man. A uh, lot of good info, bro. It's our second show, man. I know, man. This is good. <laughs> Actually, I mean, it's our second show. Yeah, back to back weeks, man. We did the exactly. other one last. I mean, we're we three shows total, man. This is good. Hey, we in there uh, like swim well. <laughs> man, line, man. We, need to, we need to find a way to get this thing to go live and get some people. What I'm gonna do it next time is uh, so I'm gonna be doing a giveaway, man. Ain't one capital's gonna be doing another sports memorabilia giveaway, man. We gave sure. away an autograph case, Keenum mini helmet. Uh, back in June, we're gonna do another one here. Uh, probably gonna do it on Black Friday. Okay. Uh, when I'm doing that, I'm gonna have you know I want. It to be a live giveaway, you know what I mean, on okay. the on Facebook group, and yeah, and uh, we need to find a way to be able to get go live and, and let people yeah. join a conversation, man, and raise hands and be able to ask questions. And, Absolutely, we'll you know. we'll, uh, we'll we'll get that going. We'll uh, discuss what platform we want to do it on, but yeah, we'll we'll definitely get that going. Uh, I like that, man, and people like giveaways. You know, yeah, everybody wants something free. I mean, yeah, I, I, I like free stuff. I don't, I don't know why anybody else wouldn't. Hey, mini helmet, man. That's what's up. Hey, uh, you got any uh any uh pardon shots to the people, man? If you know, have a trading plan, have a plan, stick to it, man. Be diligent. Uh, you know, stay the course. So I tell here, put in my newsletter that I send out quarterly, man. To, you know, stay the course, keep putting away, keep hacking away at it, man. Understand, you know, what you want for your future self. Uh, you know, don't let the politics be the, you know, the the reason that's you know scares you out of the market or or, or any other factors for that matter, man. Uh, you know, find something that, you know, that works for you or find somebody that, you know, that, that you trust into to be able to manage your, your finances. Absolutely. And, and again, man, stay the course, man. Don't don't freak out, man. Don't worry about, you know, oh, man, these job losses are happening. You know, I mean, the, the, this whole thing is cyclical, man. It's going to go up. It's going to go down. Right. Yeah. I mean, same yeah. the economic cycle, man. It's going to go up. You're going to have booms. And you're going to have busts. You have recessions. And, you know, but my biggest deal is stay the course, man, between the politics and all of the other things that you're going to hear from the talking heads on TV, man, find what you believe in, right? You know, what, what your morals, you know, ethically what you believe in and, you know, look at your goals and, you know, the things that you want to be able to accomplish yep. and don't let anybody deter you from that, man. Again, having that discipline, you know, it's not easy, but if it were easy, everybody would do it. If it was easy, it would be so many more people doing it. Absolutely. Yeah, sure. Absolutely. Sure. Hey, start early and stay consistent with it uh, yes, before you man. know it. Before you know it, uh, you'll have a, a nice nest egg or you'll have generational wealth. You'll have whatever it is that, you know, you want. But, uh, but that, it takes that, work. Absolutely. It sure takes work, man. It takes it's work not, not anything that's easy. Again, very yeah. easy. Everybody would do it, man. And again, go. don't be afraid to read, man. Or if you, you know, jump on Audible or something, man, listen to a book. I listen to a bunch of them. Sure. I think I told them about Smarter Than the Street last week. That was a very good book to read, man. So. Uh, okay. For, yeah. for, for a good little read, man. Go ahead and yeah. pick that one up, man. That was that was good. It's short, very easy to read. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's not a yeah. uh, you know not a bunch of technical jargon in there, so very easy to read. And, hey, man. One last thing, I will tell you this: Shay Gilgis Alexander. I've been Kill riding me. that horse since last year. Let me tell you this, man. He was one of my top plays, my two of my top plays today. Oh, and really? I had that going, yeah, I had that joker going over forty-five and a half fantasy points. I just uh, saw it. I, yeah. Yeah, I was I hadn't projected at 48. They ended up going to overtime and uh double OT, wasn't it? Uh I'll tell you right now, I think it is double OT. <laughs> yeah, yeah nah, man. I'm a junkie, man, when it comes to this stuff, man. I enjoy it. I love the NBA, man. Yeah, me I too. Love it. Yeah, yeah, buddy. No, it was one OT. They lost though to OKC. Look, it, it says one OT right here, but I saw one that was double. But yeah, man, he got 77. On, on my fantasy uh, league, you know, I guess that maybe some of them differ, but yeah, yeah, that boy is a monster, man. Thirty nine points, four rebounds, five assists, and two block shots, man, to go four turnovers. So I had him at over forty five and a half, and that Joker ended up with fifty three point three. That's a win. I had him on that and over twenty nine points. That is two locks that both hit. Okay. Tyrese Halliburton, another one. So yep. anybody that wants someone, like I said, I'll shoot you guys a pick. You know what I mean? Every time we come on here. 
Matter, matter of fact, for next week, we'll find out what games are being played on Thursday. Okay. I, get, I mean, shoot the people a little pick. You know what I mean? See if they. So, yeah. So he averages 65 points in my fantasy league. Yeah, uh, so, dude, so I, I don't know who had him at 45 and a half. No, no, no. This is on prize picks, man. Oh, okay. So the prize probably... picks had, you know I mean? The over under for prize picks, they had Shea at a. Uh, at over 45 and a half. And again, they do the scoring a little differently. You know what I mean? They don't give exactly. uh, bonuses for double doubles and all that stuff, but okay. it's just points, rebounds, assists, blocks, okay, uh, turnovers, steals, field goals. Uh, yeah, man. Yeah, okay. field goals. And uh, okay. yeah, I mean, it's like I said, they had them at 45 and a half. Sure. You put up 53.3. I had them at, I think, uh, what I have them at, I think projected for 48. And that joke ended up hitting at 53. Nice. You know what I mean? Nice. Yeah, had a joke projected for uh, 29 points. They had him at 27 and a half. Yeah. Yeah, so Shea Gilders Alexander, man, if you had him been riding that thing, get on him. Already. Hey, give everybody your uh, social media information, man. Yeah, man, so if you want to follow me, you can follow me, guys. And look, I guess I still am on Twitter. I know people are like, I, my students told me today, like, Coach, you got to get off Twitter. Nobody's on Twitter anymore. <laughs> so the same thing people said about me when I was on Facebook. Like, oh, you're old. <laughs> hey, you're on Facebook. You're on Twitter. So anyway, you can follow me, man, uh, 81 Capital on Twitter. Uh, you can follow, I mean, join the Facebook, you request access to the Facebook group, 81 Capital Facebook group. Uh, yeah, you can find me on LinkedIn. Uh, I think if I'm not mistaken, I'm still at Coach Chanel on Twitter also, man. So anyone wants to hit me up, by all means, please do hit me up. Absolutely. Uh, 81Capital.com, man. Uh, you know, and like I said, anybody just wants to talk, man, you have questions, feel free to call. I ain't charge you by the hour to answer questions for you, man. So I'm here to help people out. So if you need to help, please seek me out. I'm glad yeah. to do it. Yes, sir. And uh, I'll have uh, all of that information in the uh, description below. Uh, I'm Eric T. Jackson. You can uh, hit me up. Uh, Facebook, uh, Eric Teeler Jackson. Uh, Instagram, Eric T. Jackson TV. Uh, yes, sir. On the gram. Yes, sir. <laughs> Twitter, uh, Eric T Jackson TV and I'm on Twitter too. Man, I love it. Love Twitter, man. Uh, we're gonna see what kind of changes Elon makes to it though, but I'm looking forward to it. Yeah, Elon. <laughs> hey man, it's great, man. Uh next week is gonna be even greater, brother. For sure. For sure. I look forward to it, but I appreciate you having me on, dude. Yes, sir. Uh, I'll holler at All you. Right, brother. All right, Take care, man.